Okay, welcome back to Just Talking. We have a great guest uh, here today, and that's Roseanne Sarantino. Roseanne, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's very exciting. Well, for those who don't know about Roseanne, she was actually playing the, the title role of Annie on the stage version. And maybe, uh, Roseanne, if you could bring us back on how you got involved in, in that role. Sure. Um, well, uh, my love affair with Annie started when the show came out. I absolutely loved the show. And uh, my mother took me to see it. And the whole time I was in the theater, I just kept saying to her, I want to be Annie. I want to be Annie. And she kept telling me, Shh, be quiet, watch the show. <laughs> and I, I really didn't let up on her. And so what she did is she took me to a recording studio and had me record my voice singing tomorrow over Andrew McArdle's. And she sent it to someone who knew someone who knew someone. So I guess she figured it was far enough down the line that we'd never hear and this would just kind of go away. And lo and behold, they called and asked me to come audition, which I did. And um, no experience other than one small stage show when I was nine years old for the uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I was in the prime of Miss Jean Brody. I got the part and I toured around the country on the third national touring company for a year and a half uh, playing Annie. So maybe for now that when the, the Annie first came up out, it was a huge success. Um, and so maybe for those who don't know between Broadway, off Broadway, the touring thing, is it the same show and how does that work? It is the same exact show, um, except that it goes all around the country and uh, same sets, same costumes, same choreography, everything um and we just took our show on the road and we stayed probably about two weeks in each location and did two weeks worth of shows and then we'd pack up move on and go to the next place now did you have a tutor during all this or how did that work since you were at a young age yes they had a tutor who traveled with the show and we had school well, i guess about three hours a day <laughs> and um because, you know, we'd be up late doing the show, then we would sleep a little late, we'd do school, and then we'd go, I guess, play, if you will. We'd hang out with each other and then um, get dinner and go back to the theater. How was the experience being on stage in front of all those people? Um, it was the best experience of my life. I mean, it was just, I knew the minute I set foot on that stage that that's what I was supposed to be doing. Why do you think that stage musical Vanny was such a hit? Because prior to that, the, the comics were out and radio shows and things like that. But why was the musical such a, a big hit? Um, I think it was a combination of so many things. Um, it was a labor of love on the part of Martin Charnin and Charles Strauss and Tom Meehan. And it's just a really uplifting, great story. And people love kids and animals. And you put it together with the, the great book and the, the amazing music and lyrics. And it, it just, it touched something in, in people and it still does. It's still hugely popular. I mean, there are productions all over the place and it's just every, every little girl wants to be Annie. And I think it just really resonates with people and it, it, it makes you feel good. I always said the co-star was uh, Sandy. Uh, how has it worked with the dog on the stage and, and any stories you could tell? Oh God, it was great. Uh, my dog's name was Moose and uh, he had an understudy and they traveled in a motorhome. And um, I just, you know, I've always loved animals. So I remember when I met him, we just, I fell in love with him. He was my buddy. And, and by design, the animal trainer, uh, Bill Berloni, he, made sure that I was the one who had contact with the dog initially, only me. So the dog really became attached to me and because I was basically giving him most of his commands on stage. And um, he was the greatest dog. Now there was a movie version in 1982, Annie. Um, did you audition for that role of Annie or let's hear, hear about that? 
when I was touring, I actually met uh, the casting director who thought I would be great for the role of Annie. But by the time filming started and I was finished with the show, I was actually uh, too tall. <laughs> and uh, I just wasn't small enough to play Annie. So I never actually auditioned for the role, but um, my agent then got me an audition for uh, the role of Pepper, which I ultimately uh, did get. Who cares what they're wearing on Main Street or Savile Row? What you wear from here to here to here. Let's talk about that movie, but because boy, what a fun musical movie that uh, that came out, and uh, how was it being on, on that one? It was it was a lot of fun. It was very different from the show. Um, when you're on the show and you're traveling, uh, the the kids in the show become very close. We spend all of our time together. Uh, you know, you're like a bunch of sisters. The movie, you got called in, and we spent time together, but a lot of it was like on the set waiting. So it was very different for me. You know, I, I didn't realize they weren't gonna film this movie in sequence as it happened. You know, we were filming the end, and then we filmed the beginning, and then we were in the middle somewhere. And, but it was ultimately um, a really great time. I met and worked with Carol Burnett, so there's that, you know? Kissy, kissy, kissy. Kill Carol! Who is the nicest person, the sweetest lady. And I think she really cared about the kids. I know she did because um, when we were filming Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile, I was very sick. I had a fever. And in between takes, they were trying to find a place for me to kind of just lay down and rest. And... Our trailers that the kids got were not air conditioned. They were really hot and tiny and we never spent any time in there. And Carol um, offered her trailer. And so I would go in in between and lay down in, in her trailer. And she actually did the classic mommy thing, you know, where she came in and she put her lips to my forehead to see how I was feeling. And she's just amazing, amazing. But all of the adults were, we were, I mean, Albert Finney, was wonderful, really great with the kids. <laughs> Jeffrey Holder, who played Punjab, um, entertained us all the time, you know, with his big deep voice and, and his crazy movements. <laughs> um, Ed Herman, who played FDR, was a super, super nice guy. <laughs> and the only, the only, um, Actors that I really didn't have too much interaction with would be um, Anne Ranking. I didn't really have any scenes with her. And I only had one scene with Bernadette Peters and, and Tim Curry, who were lovely people, but you know, I didn't really get to interact with them as much. And let's talk about the director, John Huston. Wow, John what a, a first to knowing that he's going to direct it. And then it did, when it came out, it, it was just a, a hit as well. So let's hear about how it was directed by uh, John Huston. Well, I met John Huston at the, um, the audition. And he knew that I was Annie in the stage show. So he was very concerned with my ability to tone it down because I wasn't on stage. So he wanted to make sure that I could read a line without really projecting, that I could sing a song without belting it out, you know? So that was, um, it, it's funny at the audition, I was in the, the waiting room with my mom and the woman comes out and says, you know, Roseanne. And I said, oh, I'm right here. She said, well, what role are you auditioning for? And I said, I'm auditioning for Pepper. And she went, oh, no. You're too pretty. Mr. Houston will never choose you. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I got it. So I don't know what that says, but uh, <laughs> but I went in and, and he had me come sit at the table right across from him and sing very softly and say my lines to make sure that, you know, I, I would be able to transfer from stage to film. And, um, and he was a very nice man. He was very good with the kids, you know. One Fifth Avenue. 
We got to go to 987. Now, there are obviously some differences between the, the, the stage version and the uh, film version. I think, was it the ending even changed? I think it was originally Christmas. And yes. You know, let, let's hear the differences between the stage and the... Uh, the ending was the biggest difference um, because it, it is Christmas. It's the New Deal. It's the New Hope, the New Year. And they changed that to the 4th of July with the huge circus. So we had the Big Apple Circus come in. And, and do all these tricks. And, and that, was, that was one uh, huge difference. Another one is where the, um, you know, the orphans escape to try to help Annie is not in the show. And then I, I think the biggest change they made that really disappointed me is when Annie meets Sandy for the first time. And that's in the show when she sings Tomorrow. And it's this big moment of these two lost souls meeting and she's telling him it's gonna be okay. And, and then she sings tomorrow and they didn't do that in the film. They sang a new song called Dumb Dog, which was a cute song. But uh, for me, having been Annie, I really felt like that is one of the best moments of the show. And I didn't understand why they changed it. Now or you'll have me to deal with. Since you did play Annie and then Aileen Quinn was the star of the film, did you give her points on how to, to play the role or anything like that? Or did you guys exchange, you know, uh, uh, stories on, on the role? I don't really remember um, doing that for Eileen, but I did actually help Carol Burnett uh, because she had never seen the show. So I explained to her that in the show, whenever Miss Hannigan, um, she would come in and blow a whistle and then like grab her head because of the hangover. And she thought that that was great. So she immediately asked for a whistle and um, incorporated that. And we're not having hot mush today. Yay! We're having cold mush. No, I thought I read, was there supposedly, supposedly be planned sequels to this movie or not? I, 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 I read something like that, but did you hear, ever hear anything like that? I never heard of, of any kind of a sequel. Okay. I know they tried to do, to the play, they, they did Annie Warbucks, okay, right. but um, it didn't really take off the way I think they wanted it to. And, you know, Annie is an icon. It's an iconic show. I, I don't, I think you could keep reviving it every 10 years on Broadway and still get an audience, you know? I, I, it's that kind of a show, so. Let's take a vote. All in favor of calling it quits. Now you're on the stage uh, touring of Annie and then you're in the film of Annie. Did you pursue uh, acting after that in other areas? Uh, I did, I did. I tried for a little while and I did an off-Broadway show uh, written by Joanne Tedesco called Sacraments, where at the age of 15, I was playing a seven-year-old, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, I actually had two roles in that show. I played a, a, a child at the beginning, and then I played a different character child at the end. Um, and I did that, and I went on some auditions, but um, again, it came down always to me and like another girl, and the other girl always got picked. And I was 16 and, and my parents were going through a divorce and I said, you know, I think I just wanna go to school and go to high school, finish school. And, and that's what I did. And sometimes I go, oh, I wish I would have kept at it. But I don't have any regrets. I'm glad that I, I did what I did. And, and, you know, I went on and I had a family. I have two beautiful daughters and they're 20 two and almost 25 and um i always knew i wanted to have a family and and i knew that if you choose the life of an actor you know you have to really sacrifice a lot and i guess at 16 i just wasn't ready to make that kind of commitment but you did kind of have a coming back starring in a great online show called brace yourself, brace yourself. It is, yes it is very very good and uh where did that how did that, that all come about 
Um, well, before I started Brace Yourself, uh, I started doing stand-up comedy. And so I was doing that for, for about six, six months and I had to have uh, neck surgery. So they were like, you know, you're having the surgery. I was out of work for three weeks and I was home about two days and I was bored out of my skull. I am not, I am not a good relaxer. <laughs> and so I just kind of took to Facebook Live on my phone, you know, and I just started talking and people started watching. So I did it again uh, and people started watching and I said, wow, this is kind of cool. Maybe I'm gonna put some makeup on and look human and do it. And the very first person I had on with me was my mom. And um, that first video got like 500 views. And then it went on YouTube and it got another 500 views. So I was saying, you know, I was saying at home with the neck brace and my daughter, my oldest daughter, Bridget, who also does stand up comedy, she said to me, no, mom, you've got to call it brace yourself because I was doing every show in the neck brace. So I said, that's genius. So one thing kind of led to another and I started getting guests and interviewing people and and then the neck brace came off and I just kept doing it. Now I have this great co-host, Chris Grando, and um, and we do the show every Thursday at seven and we're having a great time. We don't always have a guest. Sometimes like last night, it was just him and I and, and now my mom has a weekly segment called Judy's Gems, sort of like she rants about the things that aggravate her. And then I think uh, I was watching one episode. You did have the dog trainer on there for, on the stage. It was fun. Yeah, let's hear some other guests you've had, you've had on. I had on Bill Berloni. I had Nancy Carson and uh, Bonnie Jaroski, who are, um, they run Carson Adler Talent Agency in New York. She was actually my agent uh, when I started. I had a local comedian um, here on Long Island, John Ziegler. He was one of my guests. He was wonderful. Um, I had an author from Boston on, Mark Sapula, who wrote The Last Longshoreman. Great book. You should read it. Um, I've had some local authors on. And, um, oh, I had Fred Talixson on, who is a Hollywood choreographer, Emmy-nominated, fantastically talented um, man. And I met him when I was 16, 15, 16, going into the city in the summer, auditioning, and we met on the train oh. and we became friends and then lost touch obviously over the years. And then because of the beauty of Facebook reconnected and, uh, and he was on the show and he was phenomenal. He was a, he was a great guest. So I'm, I'm trying to, um, you know, I'm open to all kinds of guests. I would love to have anybody on trying to get some names now to kind of boost it a little bit, but, but it's, 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 it's a lot of fun and I get a lot of great feedback from people who watch it. They say, we really enjoy Thursday nights. You're so, you make us laugh. You and Chris are so funny. So, so that's nice too. That's kind of nice. If someone misses it, you, they, you put them on the YouTube site as well. I do. Great. And I just uh, got a streaming service. So now for the first time last night, I stream live to Facebook and YouTube at the same time, which was kind of cool. So what, how can people see the, uh, the program? People can go on my Facebook page, Roseanne Sorrentino, or they could go to YouTube. And I, I think go to my page. I'm actually still figuring that, that part out. But um, every Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and you can tune in. And uh, we'd love to hear from new viewers all the time, especially if you say, hey, my first time watching the show. You know, I love to give people shout outs and say hi to them and have a good time. Actually, there is one question I love. I, I got to ask you about the show. Sure. What is your favorite glass of wine? <laughs> My favorite, well, obviously, when I'm in Chris Grando's wine cellar, um, he has amazing wines. But I am, uh, you know, I like a Pinot Noir, really. Red is my, is my jam. So I like a Pinot Noir, really is my favorite. Uh, we just have a couple minutes left. Is there anything else you'd like to mention either about the show or any? Um, going back to Annie for a minute, this um, Wednesday 
and it's on my Facebook page at, I believe it's 6.30. They're going to be doing a Cabaret for a Cause is doing a question and answer with all former Annies and orphans. And it's to benefit the Actors Fund. So you can make a donation to the Actors Fund for all of the people in the entertainment industry who have been put out of work due to COVID-19. And so I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a, a really a great fun time. Do you still keep in contact with some of the people from any either the stage version or the film version? I do actually. I kept, uh, I've been in contact with a lot of the people from the stage version. Um, through Facebook, we've all reconnected. We've actually met a few times. Uh, three years ago when it was the 40th anniversary of the show, Inside Edition did a, a, a segment on it and brought us all in together and we all got to see each other again. And so that was great. We went out to dinner and, and caught up. And uh, I do still keep in touch with Tony Ann Gazandi, who played Molly in the movie. So we, uh, over the years, kept in touch. We've done a few things together. We just, we made a film, an independent film, a few summers ago called Wind Girl that we were both in. Oh. And um, I don't know what's happening with it, but it, we made it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that was nice just to be back in that atmosphere again and work with Tony Ann. So it was, it was a good time. Well, Roseanne, it is a, has been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. We'll definitely tune into your uh, program, Brace Yourself, and thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure, and uh, stay safe, and thank you again. It was so much fun.